Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at one of the most talked about parts of the new trailer, and that is the two different professors. Some of you may be talking about them for gameplay reasons or story reasons. Others might be talking about them because the internet has found them to be very attractive. For whatever reason, you might be talking about them. I'm going to be talking about them today and why I think they could hold the key to the story of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. For the first time in the Pokemon series' history, we are going to have games with different professors. We've had multiple professors in the same game before. Oak has appeared in countless games. We've had Magnolia and her granddaughter Sonia eventually become a professor in Sword and Shield, but we've never had two different games with version-exclusive professors. We're not totally sure if they're going to be version-exclusive characters just yet, but their role as the professor on your journey is going to be exclusive to which version of the game you pick, that being Scarlet or Violet. Professor Seda and Professor Turo have a bunch of different aspects to them that are differences and the firsts for the Pokemon franchise. The obvious one is that they are not named after trees, at least in their English translation of their name. Seda and Turo are not trees. Seda might be a reference to a type of plant, so her name might still fit into the same naming schematic, but generally speaking, Pokemon is breaking the mold and not giving them tree names. That is the first interesting piece of these professors, but it's not the only interesting piece. In another piece to this naming scheme that is new and has nothing to do with trees that I think we need to take note of is the Spanish words for past and future. The Pokemon company is not subtle. The word for past in Spanish is a pasada or pasado in masculine and feminine, and the word for future in Spanish is a futura and futuro. So, seda and turo. Huh. I wonder, I wonder where you came up with these names, Game Freak. Hmm. Maybe it fits in with the overall feel and shtick of the region, just a little bit on the nose there. The other is that it kind of backs up a lot of the speculation that people have had about Scarlet and Violet and the thematic uh, nuances to Scarlet and Violet, and that is the present being something that needs to be removed, seemingly, in favor of moving to the past or going to the future. This is shown off not only in the designs of Seda and Turo, but also in the designs of the two box art legendaries, both of which share some very common naming. They are different. One looks like more of an ancient dragon, whereas the other looks like a futuristic, almost android-looking creature that might not be fully uh, animalistic. It might have some artificial pieces to it. So there's a lot of interesting past versus future things going on here. And the professors are no different. Professor Seda looks as if she has come straight out of the Flintstones and Professor Turo looks like he came straight out of the Jetsons. These are interesting designs and it's interesting that they're using the professors themselves to push the theming of the game. Generally, when you have a professor, their research interest reflects sort of the, the gimmick of the Pokemon region itself. Professor Rowan was interested in evolution in Generation 4. In Generation 4, we had a ton of new evolutions for Pokemon from previous generations that didn't have one. Other professors, like Professor Sycamore, was interested in studying Mega Evolution. It's interesting that he's also a pupil of Professor Rowan, who is interested in evolution, and Mega Evolution was the gimmick of Pokemon X and Y and that generation as a whole. Professor Kukui in Pokemon Sun and Moon was interested in attacks and Pokemon battling specifically, and Z-Moves was the big gimmick of the generation. Professor Turo and Professor Seda not yet known what their research interests are. That was not revealed to us in the trailer. It is not something that we get to see on the Pokemon website either, but their designs reflect the thematic nature of these games. This is a first for Pokemon. Most of the professors in the past have differences in their designs, whether it's Magnolia or Sycamore or Oak or Birch. They all look different and they're all their own characters, but they fill the same niche and they don't really have a ton that they give off with their design as to what the gimmick that they're representing is. These, the designs, seem to represent 
the theming of the game. And that is a first for the franchise. Now, before going any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. Check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that would also be greatly appreciated. There is a lot of wild speculation about these professors based on their designs, based on the fact that they're version exclusive, all of it based on the level of attractiveness of their designs, everything you can think of. Some in the community think that they're evil, or at least their counterpart is evil in the reverse game that you play. So if you play through the game where Professor Seda is your, you know, your basic professor run of the mill, gives you your Pokemon, sets you off on your journey, that sort of thing. The opposite professor is going to actually be in the game, but is going to be evil, maybe lead the evil team, the organization looking to bring about a return to the past or a moving towards the future in some sort of nefarious way, probably using the legendary Pokemon on the box. I have a difficult time believing they're going to make the professor evil. We're talking about a franchise that has pretty much stopped referring to rivals as rivals and a long time ago stopped making them antagonists of the game. Uh, the, the seeming rival of this game is just labeled your friend on the website. I have a difficult time thinking they're going to make the professors evil. Some of the reasons people have pointed to the, the fang-like teeth uh, and the, the general seam of the feel that is different from what the typical professor is, what I mentioned before, their design seemed to fit the theme a lot more as opposed to just a basic professor. Those are some of the reasons people are pointing to. Some responses from the Pokemon company's social media to accounts on Twitter seeming to make jokes about the professors. A lot of that is the reasons people think they're going to be evil. And I don't really agree. Let's establish something. Game Freak and the Pokemon Company's social media channels almost never correlate. There's always predictions and rumors that certain measures by the social media accounts are leading up to news, leading up to announcements, are trying to hint at things and hype things up. And while sometimes that is the case, it's almost always that the people running the social media accounts don't directly get their directives from Game Freak. They don't have a bigger, larger marketing plan. They have a marketing plan in place, but it's not in the way you would maybe assume. So I don't necessarily think we're going to get professors who are evil. I think we're going to get professors who are central to the gimmick of the game. And I think the gimmick of the game is going to reflect the theme of the game. This present seemingly being not acceptable anymore and a return to the past or a moving towards the future needing to be the paramount focus for people in this region. I think the gimmick is going to stem from that. It's obviously going to be a gimmick that impacts battle. It's going to change the way a Pokemon works in battle. It won't be Mega Evolution or Z-Moves or Dynamaxing. Those are probably by the wayside by now, but it's going to be another thing that impacts battle. Maybe it's a type change. Maybe it's different forms of Pokemon, ancient forms versus futuristic forms. Something like that is what I think these professors and the overall shtick of this region is hinting to. I think it's something that's going to change the Pokemon's complexion, change their design, change what different attacks they can use, maybe via a type change. Something of that sort is what the gimmick is going to be. At the end of the trailer, I've mentioned this in videos past, we saw a strangely animated teaser after the release date was given of a Pokeball traveling through what seems to be some sort of different dimension with glass and, and crystal reflecting off of it and it traveling through. The legendaries look very similar and have similar names. A lot of people have come up with the theory that they are actually the same creature, one from the present, uh, one from the past and one from the future. Maybe Pokemon are going to change in this way as well. Maybe different Pokemon are going to take on different forms depending on if they are from the past or if they are from the future. And all of this comes to the big theme of the game. I think past and future are going to be the theme in both. I don't think that the focus of Scarlet and Violet are going to be split and different, one focusing on the past, one focusing on the future in terms of its story. I think both elements are going to be there. 
we've seen some interesting things of the, the modern characters seemingly representing the present, your rival character. I did a discussion on uh, Ruffled Rowlett's channel on his podcast the other day that's going to go up in the next coming days. I would highly recommend you guys check it out. And in it, we talked about this battle between the past and the future and how both of them stem from a dissatisfaction with the present and how your rival character seems to represent the present very well. I think all of these discussions come back to the professors and what their role in the story is going to be. We don't know a ton yet to completely predict what the story beats are going to be. We don't know anything about the evil team just yet, but I think it is noteworthy that the professors are so specifically designed in this game, so much more so than they have ever been before. And I think it directly is going to represent the theme of this game and eventually the gimmick of this game. And it'll all tie together. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you agree with my early, albeit, analysis of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's story and the connection the professors might have? Are you just excited that they're really attractive, or do you not find them attractive at all, and you don't really get what all the hype is about on social media? Let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments section below. And check out some of my other Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos, either before the most recent trailer or some of my analysis videos that I've done in the last week since. With that all being said, I have been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.